Hi, welcome to PE Minute. We're here at Vincent High School today, home of the Vikings, with Julie Nesberger. Hi, Julie. Hi, nice to see you. How are you? Very good, thanks. Let me ask you a few questions. We All right. have seen a little bit of the print rich environment that you have here in your school, and uh, everybody's kind of wondering how you do a great job here getting all your kids involved. How often do your students have swimming? Well, through my 16 years here at Vincent, we've had it between block scheduling, we've had nine week sessions, but currently our students do an 18 week uh, swim session. All the freshmen go through the pool, and uh, of that 18 weeks, probably 15 of them, they are actually physically in the water. Um, I do have alternate curriculum set up so that, in essence, the first week is a transition week where we do a scavenger hunt on the pool deck so they get familiar with all the equipment, all the things, displays. I also do a uh, safety brief, and then by, t by the time we give them lockers, locks, and get them adjusted to transitioning from locker rooms onto the pool deck, we're pretty much looking at the first week is pretty much padlock locks and transition skills. After that, we pretty much try to get them in the water right away and get them comfortable. That scavenger hunt gets them comfortable with the pool deck. And beyond that, I do also have uh, some PowerPoint um, assignments that we do in a computer lab. Uh, a lot of that's in flux based on the fact that sometimes our pool goes down. So I have a lot of other curriculum set up to cover times when we cannot physically get in the water. But we currently do an 18-week semester. Sounds good. What are your strategies to get the students to dress and participate? A lot of times we hear from other schools that they just can't get the kids in the water. They can't get them dressed. And I, I mean, I can't take a lot of the credit. I've got principals that have been phenomenal that I talked with them right away and expect you know explain to them what the safety issues are around the pool. And I explained to them that having kids sitting in jeans and their regular school attire with book bags and items out here just adds to a safety issue in case one of them were to fall in. Principal, assistant principals, our grade level administrators have been 100% on board so that they know that the procedure that is set up is that if they do not come dressed the first day, I make a phone call right away that first day that we transition to changing. Second day, they go right to that grade level administrator and it's really enforced right away those first couple days where the kids understand they still have a safety net that as long as they dress and sit on my bleachers I'm not making them physically get in water right away so they've got that transition time so the administration's been a big impact on that uh, the second in, second incident is basically me calling parents frequently and I, I try to get a good report with the parents they're usually on board they want their children to learn because they don't know and it's just a matter of constantly keeping in communication with the parents and the administration and it's worked really really well that parent contact is so key good and bad you know sharing good stories with parents and when there are negative things that you need help addressing can you go through a typical class that you would have in miss nussberger's pool well like i said you know we've got it set up it's very structured very organized they come in through the entry doors they have to have an id to physically get into class um, I don't let them bring book bags and electronics into the locker rooms, obviously supporting our state statue with electronics. They come into the locker rooms, they get about six minutes to change, I turn on the showers, they know they have a transition onto the pool deck. As you can see behind us, we've got our bleacher section, which they know that is our designated uh, location for uh, attendance, which I take a second time. And that way I don't have to worry about, I, I get a head count right away, I don't have to worry about kids hiding in the locker room. Um, but a typical day starts out where they know Monday and Wednesdays is a team activity day. Tuesdays and Thursdays are a lesson day, and Fridays is a water exploration day. And uh, so they kind of know what they're going to see when they come in here. And uh, I start out with water volleyball. Everything we do is shallow water. So even our water polo courts, which are set up right now, are for using the width so that all the students can participate. There's no you know, worries that they're going to not be able to be treading water. And so I do everything shallow water, which has been a big plus with getting the kids involved. I do an intro. Um, the learning intentions are posted on a whiteboard outside the locker room so they know what's specifically set up. And it's pretty much, it runs like clockwork. At the end of the day, uh, with about 15 minutes remaining, I give them a little extra time for showering. I have a green line, which is where they line up to get their towels and go in the locker room. So it's all, I try to be consistent. Um, and, the, and that helps the kids because they know what to expect and they know the procedures and policies that are in place. Yeah, kids like structure, even if it's a struggle to get them to follow it at first. Once they start following it, they tend to like that.
I'm assuming that when you first started teaching here at Vincent that not all the students immediately start addressing and participating. You know, we get this question from new teachers a lot, you know, how long does it take in order to really get going with the program where you get the kids to start to do the kinds of things you want to improve that success rate that you've got, you know, that you want to get in the right. pool? Right. I mean, realistically, my first couple of years were a struggle. Um, after that, I mean, I've just recently implemented, well, not recently, about five years ago, six years ago, a mentor program with my pool monitors, which are upperclassmen that had me. And they're, an, they're another resource that I have that help encourage these kids, come on, Miss Nusper is not going to push you in the water, just get on the bleachers. And they've been an integral part of getting these kids to cooperate because they're not me as an adult lecturing them and talking down to them. It's actually an upperclassman that's like, hey, I've been in your shoes, I've been in this class. And that really helps with a few kids that are a little bit tentative. And a lot of it's just trying to make it a fun environment. Um, the displays that have already been seen on the video, I mean, it didn't happen overnight. But each year I try to make a point of adding new ones. And the kids have noticed it, and they do respect it. And they, I think they take pride in the fact that it's a cool-looking pool area. Our art department has helped with some of the displays where it's students that have created those, and then I add some verbiage underneath. And I think that in itself, you know, the kids come in, it's a very welcoming environment. They know it's strict. They know it's firm. But they also know it's actually very cool with having maroon and gold flags, you know, using maroon duct tape on our goals. It just tries to get them to buy in with our uh, Gold Vincent and focusing on success. Yeah, well, it looks really nice. You're right, it is a welcoming environment. How do you keep this print rich environment? Because I know looking around here, I'm thinking to myself that if other people were using the pool, if other teachers were using the pool, if other programs were using the pool, it would be really tough to keep stuff up. How do you do that? Well, part of it's using, I laminate everything that goes up, and part of it is also tr having that equal respect back with the students that you have to understand that this is part of our goals, part of our learning intentions is that they keep the visibility of these safety measures that are in place. And I think they take pride in the fact that I've had kids come in and say, hey, I think so I saw someone messing with a couple of the letters and I put them back up for you. So, I mean, they, I think they actually realized there was a lot of work and a lot of effort put in. And for the most part, I've had very little vandalism or kids touching the, uh, the items that are on display. It does happen on occasion, but I think that's in any high school and anywhere.